Yo guys, what's up? Today we're going to be doing a video all about OSL. I'm going to explain all of that in a minute. These are some Custodes Dreadnoughts or Custodes Dreadnoughts uh, that I'm painting up for a commission. We've got seven of these bad boys to do, one Telemon, which will be the focus of today's video, and six of the Contemptors. These are beautiful models. It's a great way to take them to that next level. So let's kick the video off with defining what OSL means. OSL means object source lighting. And what that means is that you're gonna create the effect, the optical illusion of one part of your miniature casting a light onto another part of the miniature. In this video, we're using the Telemon. We're taking the backpack vents from there and having this kind of nuclear powered Godzilla-like blue glow come through those. And then critically, it's going to influence the areas around it. Uh, ordinarily in painting, there are very few rules that you have to follow, but that's not true for this technique. What we're going to do now requires an understanding of the way that light works and how it interacts with things. And I'm going to explain that to you in this video, but if you're just starting off and you want to see an easier way to do some OSL, then check up here where you can find a video. We did some object source lighting on the base of this model, a very simple glowing effect. Now there are two rules you have to follow. Rule one is that light moves in straight lines called rays. You can't bend light around corners or anything else without the aid of mirrors and other reflective surfaces. And that is a much, much, much more advanced technique than what we're going to be doing today. So that's rule number one. If you don't nail that, instead of having a nice light source, your audience is going to look at your miniature and go, you've just got kind of a blue smudge. I see what you've tried to do. And that's not what we want. The second rule is that your light source has to be the brightest part of the miniature. Certainly, if you think about the way that the torch works, then the bulb in the torch is lit up much, much brighter than the field of view that you have. We have to replicate that. Now, there are some times where it can come very close to being as bright, such as on a very reflective surface like metal. I'm gonna show you that in this video. Either way, as long as you follow those two rules, regardless of what it is that you're painting at home, you'll be able to achieve something with a similar effect. Let's get to it. And here he is, the subject of today's video, the Telemon with the big old fists. What an absolute unit this guy is. The first thing you need to do is get pretty much everything else painted. You can see this is where we're gonna get our uh, OSL done, but all these areas need to be highlighted before you start. Almost every time you're blending a progression from one color to another with the airbrush, you want to make sure you're leaving some residue in the pot from your previous color. So whatever you do after you finish the work you're doing at this initial step, don't completely clean your airbrush. Don't flush it all out. Leave some of that in there. By leaving that in there, then adding in some more flow improver and another color, you'll steadily build up a change of hue from one to another. So we've got that scale 75 Canterbury blue now. Now we need to work out where our lights can actually hit. So with the aid of a straight edge, in this case, I'm just using the end of a paintbrush, I'm sort of following down from above to see what the light will cast a, a uh, effect on too. And so here we've got both sides of this vent. From this side, we've got all of one part of the vent, but none of the other. So it's gonna stop there. It won't go down any further. You really need to map this out before you go anywhere near trying to get the effect started. What you can see I'm doing here is just taking my thumb and using that as a mask as we cover over one half of these top side of the vent. So this is lit from that little uh, exhaust port on the rocket pod he's got there at the top. Now this step is the most important step in all of your object source lighting. You need to get the sort of foundation down and this first pass with the airbrush is the light that extends the furthest distance from our light source. So this will be the biggest sphere of influence you have uh, on any part of the miniature from this point onwards. Everything else that comes after this will fit inside this little sphere of influence in ever decreasing steps. So you can see we're looking at anything that falls in line below that first vent at the top. Anything that might possibly be influenced by that is getting a little pass with the airbrush. Now you see here we're using that rocking trigger motion to be very accurate with our airbrush spray. But just be sure you don't overdo it. You need to keep this paint very thin. That's why we're thinning it three to one to ensure that we've got something that just glazes over our surface and doesn't replace it entirely. 
here on the shoulder pads you see we're coming around a little bit more uh, and we're trying to be as soft as possible here because we have a different surface here than so we've got on our metallics and that will ch definitely definitely showcase itself uh, as we get through the video you'll certainly see that with the highlights that we've got going on so now we're coming in and we're adding in a little bit more of that blue to the uh, the top of these vents we're using again our thumb to help mask that off and as we get to the bottom part we've got this kind of uh, strange situation where part of this will be masked off by that kind of vent in the middle there here we've got these nice bright surfaces but at the bottom we've got more things that get in the way of the light so we've kept our lights there a little bit more restrained now like i said without thinning out uh, anything just adding to the pot we're taking some cp3 signal blue base and we're going to put in a little highlight everywhere that we've just done but in a smaller sphere of influence so on those vents we've just left a little of the darker area surrounding it and this is really really important we need to have that progression from the darkest version of our light into the brightest version of our light and you cannot understate that if you get any part of that wrong again that's where you're going to have that blue smudge it's not going to work out for you equally what i want to get out of this is a very bright and vibrant blue we want this to be full of power and not completely desaturated and that's why we're going through these brighter colors these are the sort of things you need to plan out whenever you're going to approach anything like this just how bright do i want it just how large do i think these uh, like um, these light effects will go we're adding in some Lothurn blue now we're doing exactly the same thing you see the difference between these two vents one was done that was on the left now we're just bringing the one up on the right towards that standard and we're still leaving that little uh, area around the edges still in the darkness we're bringing this in further now on places like the shoulder we'll again highlight the top of the uh, backpack vents all of that sort of thing but now we're starting to get into that brighter blue. We're putting this down. It's a very vivid blue still, very powerful. It's not washed out. There's a lot of life to it. This is going to give us something that contrasts well against our gold. It's going to give us something that is very cool in effect. And that's going to contrast against the warm of the purple that we've got. And it's going to work for us really, really well. Loads of things to consider when doing anything like this. It's not just a case of get your airbrush spray and then, you know, well, you'll see the next steps in a minute. We're going to add in some more Lothurn blue. That's right, we're doing two highlights with this. That's because we want that super smooth transition. So anytime you're doing something like that, take your airbrush, just flush most of the paint out leave a little bit of residue at the bottom of the cup essentially if you can see the needle then you're probably in a good place add in some more flow improver then take a couple of drops of the paint and we're keeping to that three to one ratio so throughout all of this i was dropping in six drops of flow improver two drops of paint and that was giving me everything i needed to do for this constantly using things like my thumb my finger to mask off because I don't want to spray this all the way down to the base of the dreadnought, nor do I want to get its legs. I want to keep it nice and restrained. So after we've done that second highlight pass, we're starting to get something that looks a lot more like it's been lit up. We're still very far away from having that finished, and this is where it's going to start to improve. We're adding in some P3 Sickly Skin. Now, if you start getting into the brighter colors like this, you can find that your paint goes a little bit speckly. If that's the case, take a little bit of water add that into the paint get going with it and you should find that there's no speckling left always always test your airbrush spray on something before you test it on the miniature so for me i'm using a chopping board that's painted black as my background i just spray it a little bit on the corner there before i go anywhere near the model to ensure that i'm happy with it this is really really starting to come together now we've got a very bright blue that's showing up on all of those metallics you'll notice we've got some angles between the uh, rocket pod at the top and the tip of those uh, little vents and now we're going in with our brightest and last airbrush highlight this one will only go into the middle of those vents to make sure that they're the brightest element we talked about that earlier on with the torch without the darkness you can't appreciate the light now that is a very grandiose statement but here it's extremely extremely accurate 
When you're doing any kind of lighting effect on your miniature, you need the interplay of light and shadow to help do several things. One of them is to establish detail. The shadow that sits in the recesses where light couldn't get to uh, is gonna give you that extra bit of definition. So here you can see we're getting a definition on things like the top of the backpack, underneath the, uh, the little bits that go around those power vents. We're starting to bring back that definition. The second thing it's gonna do is give your model a sense of the dramatic. So we're gonna see this very dark to very bright lighting effect take place. By the time we've done our highlights, we need to lay the groundwork for that now. Now, we've all seen OSL that's just been somebody spraying around with an airbrush and calling it done. But honestly, you really shouldn't stop there. This step and the next step only take a couple of minutes and it transforms your miniature into something that goes from being very basic and slightly sort of amateurish into something that really, really does stand out and is a, a magnificent spectacle on the table. And you really can see it just by adding in those little recess shades, it has transformed everything we've got here. Next up, we're starting to get our highlights down. So what we need to do now is take some sickly skin and some Lothan blue. I've mixed these in around a two to one mix. And we're starting off with our light source. Whenever you're doing the brushed highlight phase of anything like this, always start there. Because that has to be the brightest point that informs you how much and how large your highlights can be on anywhere else. As you can see here, we're then starting to take the highlights to the edges of our metallic surfaces. So these elements under here were gold, they're metallic, they're gonna be shiny. We're making sure each edge of that has a nice little highlight. Don't overdo it. Remember, this should be just that glint of light that happens on the edge of something. Here, where we've got these three separate elements to those backpack vents, for instance, I'm gonna do one highlight at the front, We'll stop it before it gets all the way to the back there, leaving a little bit of a space between that highlight and the next one, where we can then start applying our next highlight. That's gonna give us a kind of staggered looking appearance to our highlights here, which will look a lot more natural, bearing in mind the angle between these and the vent above. That light is being cast down here. It's very soft, but it is making sure that we're having those little peaks of highlights. We're also making sure here that we're brushing those highlights into the brightest part of our gold. So here you can see we're just taking our brush and we're just adding in a little of that highlight that follows towards that area. And the reason behind that is because whenever you see something, especially something with a curved surface, the light effect on it tends to travel around that surface a little bit more. When we get to something like this, however, that is not a metallic, or at least has some sort of lacquered enameled surface, we are making sure those highlights are smaller. Now, while I get on with the rest of these highlights, I wanna to talk to you about Patreon and Twitch. I'm live on Twitch four days a week. You can tune in anytime from 9 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, that's GMT. And you can watch the show live, ask questions in real time, and get some uh, giveaways and things like that we do on a very frequent basis. We also have a Patreon, and I'd like to thank the following people for supporting me. Tim Whitney, Melchete, Master Mouse, Scrub Lord, Harold, Bjorn, Vika, Jay Ward, Akuna Matata, Jonathan Davis, and Jacob Hadina. Thank you to every single one of you guys. You are really helping me out. Definitely a big support for the channel. And remember, anyone that's interested, you can go to Patreon and get video guides just like this one every other week, as well as a written guide giving you a full PDF tutorial every single week. Thanks very much. So once we've got all of those highlights in there, you can see this is really, really coming together, but we need to go one step further. Remember how I said earlier on that the light source needs to be the brightest part of the miniature? Well, now we're just coming back in with another highlight to these areas to ensure that that is the case. I did not want to go up to a full white. You could do if you really wanted to, but here I find it's always a little bit better to just continue on with that slightly off white because it still leaves the color showing through. It stops you from having something that is a very jarring experience. And let's be honest, that's not necessarily what you're looking for here. Thank you to everyone for watching the video. Please leave a comment giving me any feedback about them, whether you want something changed, improved, whether you just liked it, whether it's just, hey, it's Friday, whatever. Comments are always really, really handy. Uh, also, if you've given this a go, 
come and join our community discord where you can share some pics in the whip maybe even come onto the stream you can have us discuss them and give you some feedback in real time peace out everyone <laughs>